Welcome back. This is RG Mark JP TV, and we're gonna do the last couple of games between Bill and Gensei from that very big best of 41 set. These games are no longer part of the best of 41, but they were played right after the best of 41 finished. Gensei won in the end. He has 21 wins against Bill's 16. So Bjol put up a valiant effort, got himself into the lead early on, but in the end, Gensei had an amazing comeback, winning a total of 11 games out of 13 games, which is a really impressive performance. He really earned that win. He fought really, really hard for that one. It looked like Bjol was going to win when we were at the halfway point. But Gensei proved us all wrong, he proved the doubters wrong, and showed us that he does indeed uh, have all the skills. He is indeed, rightfully, one of the very best, fastest players in the entire world. So Gensei against Bill here. We're almost at the finish line of this very big set of games. Even though these games no longer belong to the set, we're almost at the finish line we can see the finish line on the horizon. We just have a couple more miles left to travel. There's a little bit more, a little bit further to go. But by the end of the video, we will reach the finish line and we will look back, satisfied, and say to ourselves, we made it all the way to the end. We persevered, we held on, we went on and on and on. We held strong, we believed in ourselves, and we made it through a total of 41 games, plus one, because there was one draw, which makes it 42. But yeah, we have done what I thought I wouldn't be able to do, and that is stay sane casting a set of 42 or 41 games in total. Now back to the game itself, we've got Gensei. On the other side of the map, going for Nexus first into Forge, pile in the choke, then a gateway in the back, two gas there. So yeah, he's gonna go for a lot of economy, as is the standard build order that most of these Koreans go for, is Nexus before anything else, because that Nexus is gonna help that Protoss become rich, strong, and get fast technology up and running, and be able to progress into a bigger economy after a very fast technology build order. It's a great strategy, a lot of diversity, there's 20 different options you can go with that opening. So many different things you can do to catch that Terran off guard. Now Bjol here is going back to what in my opinion is his very best build order, that is the two factory build order. I believe this is what Bjol is best at. I don't think there's any other player who is at, as good at two factory build order as Biol is. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe Mong, maybe Flash himself, maybe Brain is better at this. So far from what I've seen, Biol is so damn good at that factory build order. He's got such amazing timings. He understands his limits probably better than anyone else understands limits on fastest map. So given the information that Gensei has gathered with that early scout here, with this probe that has managed to stay and remain in the top corner, undetected, unseen, he's gonna build gateways here in the corner, he's gonna go for Dark Templars inside of Beel's base. This is very ballsy, this is too ballsy, this is very risky, and I don't think this is gonna work. I don't think this is gonna work. Because I think Biel is gonna walk into that corner before the Dark Templar finishes and kill the pylon or the gateway before the Dark Templar is finished and slamming with his blade on whatever is here inside the base. So I don't think this is gonna work, but Gensei is gonna try to make it work. It's the kind of player he is, he's gonna try to make stupid things work, because why not? He likes a challenge, and this most certainly is a big challenge. And yeah, you can find out. He gets found out. Like, Buell just wanted to build turrets in the corner. And now there's a gateway in the corner that's building a Dark Templar. And he's hoping that the Dark Templar spawns before the turret finishes up. 
This is a pretty ballsy move. Pretty, pretty ballsy move. Biel has his units in position there to intercept the Dark Templar. Dark Templar are not even close to finishing up, and the turret is all pretty done. Places a miner in a corner as well because mine upgrade is finished up. A double tank there. He hasn't built a frontal wall yet. Dark Templar finishes up, runs away, gets. survives! With, I think, pretty much no HP at all. It kills the turret there, now going to the backside. He got scanned in the backside there though, hasn't used it yet, so he can kill the Dark Temple if he wants to. He just decides not to. We've got Siege Mode there finished well, on the way. We've got Goliaths already on the map to snipe shuttles out of the air. Pot on there in the corner going to go down very soon. So yeah, that stupidity from Gensei. I don't want to say it didn't get results, because it did kill two turrets there inside of Buell's base, but it didn't really get any significant results. It is, though, it is, though, it is preventing Buell from going for the early timed attack. He had to take care of the gateway and the pylon there in the corner, take care of the Dark Templar, which stops him from attacking, and usually, usually, Buell loves to attack at about the 5 minute mark, when he has Siege Tanks finished up, got some Vultures, got Siege Tank, uh, Siege Mode uh, upgrading, and when he arrives here in the front, Siege Mode finishes up and he starts Sieging up and starts attacking the cannons and then he breaks through with the Vultures and the tanks, and then the Protoss is in a lot of trouble. So Gensei didn't manage to prevent that from happening, which is, in my opinion, pretty great. Pretty great. Because now Biol is reaching a point in the game where he's actually weaker than the Protoss. So the mech build order, the start is very weak, and then after the factories finish, mech build order is pretty strong when the tanks come rolling out. It is pretty damn strong. It's stronger than what a Protoss has at that exact timing in the game. But after we reach this point here at 7 minutes, this is when the Protoss becomes stronger than the Terran for the next 5 or 6, even 7 minutes. This is when a Protoss gets to shine, and Gensei is being pretty interesting here by putting shields up on the high ground because he's, he's expecting a tank drop, I assume, and this gives him time to respond. This is very unorthodox, but this is really smart use of shuttles during the time that you're waiting for units to spawn to pick up with the shuttles. He's giving them a purpose, giving them something to do, not just having them hang here in the front doing nothing at all. Now they're providing actual information and protection and coverage of the map. So I like that detail. Gensei has a lot of these similar details in his gameplay. Where he does things like this that sometimes, or most of the times, wind up making a difference in his advantage. And I like it. But this is a six shuttle drop. Completely filled to the brim. Every single shuttle has something carrying in. Well, not all of them. This one is empty. But pretty much every single shuttle has something inside it. He's gonna fly in over the front side. Do we have something in the front? We got Goliaths. Most of the Goliaths are in the back. But now moving to the front to intercept. He's gonna alert on the front of Yol's base behind enemy lines. He's gonna ignore the wall. He's gonna unload right on top of the enemy units. The tanks are dying in the front. More tanks rolling to the front there to help kill the Reaver. The Reaver is the biggest problem. Gensei actually screwed up because he forgot the Templar Storm upgrade. Now the Templar is not going to go down. Like, imagine if he had Storms right there. He completely messed up. He forgot Storm upgrade. If he had Storms right here, the Goliaths would have probably died. The tanks would have died way faster. He maybe would have won the game just with that one big drop unload here in the front. Maybe he would have won the game just with that, but he completely screwed up. And now Buell, Buell is pretty happy about that. Buell is pretty happy about that, because now he's got a lot more time to prepare more defenses, get a bigger economy, get more gas, get more factories. He is smiling from ear to ear with Gensei screwing up as big as that. Now, the game isn't over for Gensei. That would be just fake news. Gensei is still very much within the race, he still has a very high chance of winning the game. But it has become easier for Biol because Biol has been given more time to respond to the possibilities that Gensei has up his sleeve. So yeah, Gensei 
is pretty mad about screwing up like that. Got a big scan coming in. Scans the front. Doesn't scan this part there so we can't see the shuttles. He probably already thinks the shuttles have left the base. Which is not true. They're still there. He's reorganizing his goliaths from side to side. Deciding on are the shuttles going to come from the left, the right, the north, the front. Who knows? They're going to be coming from somewhere. And Beal at the moment doesn't yet know which direction is going to be. So he's trying his best to cover every single direction up as best as he can. The back double armory already has level 1 attack finished up. Level 2 attack on the way and level 1 armor also on the way. Level 1 armor just there finished up. Bill's upgrades always very, very, very good with the upgrades. Gets them very fast. I think faster than pretty much everyone else. And... It matters. Upgrades really do make a big difference. Shuttles are coming in. Trying to snipe some shuttles with the, with the Goliaths. Manages to kill some of them, but there's so many shuttles there on the scene. He unloads right on top of the command center. Kills... Gonna kill the tanks, gonna storm the SCVs. Get some pretty good storms of this. Triple, e triple Templar. Four Templars. Five or four storms in total. A lot of SCVs do survive the storms, though, because he kind of misplaced the storms, but now the command center is under attack. The tank can be taken down as a lot of zealots are on the scene. Gets an EMP there on the Archon. The Archon doesn't care though because the command center is dead and gone. He almost repaired it. He was repairing it but couldn't repair fast enough because there were simply too many units on the scene hammering it down. And that just goes to show that even though Biol had so much time to prepare for drops that sometimes a good and well executed drop with a great unit combination can really hit you so hard that it doesn't matter if you defend it well, the drop is just too damn hard hitting. He did lose a lot of SCVs as well, he wasn't about 70, now on 45, so about 30 went down. At least he kept 45 of them alive, which is pretty important, because anything less would have meant a death sentence at this point. Genza is preparing another big drop, I kind of like that he's only using 3 robos, most of the time we see people go for 4 or... Okay, he's got 4 of them. He's got 4 robos, one in the back. Yeah, usually four or five robos in total wind up doing the trick. Now this is going to be the real drop that Gensei wants to hit with, and this is going to be somewhat of a distraction drop. Or maybe it's going to be the other way around. Got the Voltator on the side, providing vision. Mines in the middle, detecting the shuttles. Biol knows what's up. Biol doesn't know this one drop on the bottom side is coming in there, though. Okay, he's responding to it. Snipes that out of the air. Templar didn't load. Storms on pretty much nothing at all. Already back on 53 SCVs, level 2 attack, they're on a tank of 1 armor. His upgrades are damn good. 1 armor 2 attack there as well for Gensei though. So his own upgrades aren't that bad either, he's getting shield and armor now. Space is pretty well filled out, in my opinion. And 71 probes in total, comes in over the front side. He's gonna alert on the front. This time around he's got storms though on his Templar, storming on the tanks, storming on the Goliath, storming on even more tanks, clearing everything out here in the front. This is a nightmare situation for Viol, using moving units on the back to the front, although now he's forced the micro away from the front towards the back, so Zealots are attacking everything. The Goliaths with their upgrades, the tanks with their upgrades are doing a pretty damn good job. We've got an observer on the scene, but he's gonna get sniped out of the air by accident. He stays alive, more storms coming down there. Biol survives the storm. The barrage of the gateway units coming in, trying to kill him. And now he's actually going on the counter-attack. Or maybe he's going to pull back, but now that more units are coming through that frontal pathway here, that's opening up into his choke. Siege tanks are sieging up. Dragoon's getting absolutely exploded. A couple more units are coming from across the map. He's going to put them on the middle there, though, but he's going to run into a mine, maybe? He does not run into the mine. He's going to try to build cannons on the middle, but... Buell smells blood. He doesn't care about his small economy. Buell just wants to go and punch B Gensei right in the mouth, right in the teeth. He does not want to give Gensei time to go even bigger and stronger comparatively to himself. And the tanks and zealots, so the tanks are doing a pretty good job of pushing forward, but he's losing a lot of vultures and goliaths, and his army keeps shrinking. He was on 150 supply, now 136. He might not be able to keep up with Gensei's production. Got a drop there coming over the top right of his base. Goes straight for the minerals. As if he's gonna run away. They are running away, but not all of them are hotkeyed. Temples are on the scene. Temples gonna storm on everything they can. Storms on two groups there. Ooh, doesn't kill a lot of them. 
does not kill a lot of them SCVs. This is pretty good there for Biol. One Templar still in sight. That's sure there, though. We got the fight here happening in the front. Great storm there for this one Templar. I'm waiting for the Templar to unload. Tanks are microing back. We're trying to buy as much time. That might be put down as well. Oh, this Templar here inside the shuttle has got me anxious, got me nervous. The lost there on top of the tank, the other side. Explosive tanks. Ooh, the great Reaver shuttle micro there. Prevents exploding the mine. The Reavers still do go down, but they take two more tanks with them. The Templar's still there in the shuttle. Bill hasn't noticed. Bill's supply is... He already stormed. So, he already stormed. He's on 22 SCVs. He already stormed. While we were jumping back and forth trying to see the Templar storm, he already stormed. Bill calls GG. Only 22 SCVs alive. Can't produce anything anymore. Can say won that one pretty convincingly, despite the absolute disaster of a first drop attempt. That first drop, absolute disaster. Never seen a drop worse than that. If only he had. Storm upgrade because he had five Templars in those shuttles waiting to hit those Goliaths and tanks with the storms. But nope, he forgot the most important upgrade to his strategy, and that was the storm upgrade. The Templars were just standing there inside the enemy base waiting for Biol to execute them. Brutal stuff. They couldn't fight back, just standing there waiting for the impending execution. But that doesn't matter, against A1, yet again, this protest against Terran really is insanely good. And I was always of the opinion that Buell's Terran against Protoss was in often, in many cases, almost unbeatable. But Gense has been on an absolute roll. He's been schooling Buell pretty damn hard over the past 15 games. He's been playing really, really impressively winning pretty much everything and I always thought like I've said it just now I always thought Biol was exceptionally good at Terran against Protoss and he is exceptionally good he wins a lot of Terran against Protoss games against a lot of very experienced very strong top level players it just so happens that Gensei might not be one of them might not be one of them. Although Gensei did lose, I think, the first three Protoss against Terran games that he played against Biol in this um, massive set of games. He did lose the first three Protoss against Terran games. So we've got another interesting build order coming out here from Gensei. It's going to be triple gateway. It's going to rush onto Biol. And Biol is going to have to defend himself, but I think Biol is more than capable of defending himself. He's going for triple barracks right here at the start. No command center, no factories. He's going to play as standard as can be. And I think this is arguably the single best counter build order to a triple gateway opening. Triple gateway opening, in my opinion, not that strong against the early barracks, the early marines, the early marine micro that Buell has ready and prepared for Gensei's incoming attacks with those Zealots. Gensei is going to have to pull off some really amazing Zealot Micro. Because we already know that Bill has amazing Marine Micro. It is simply one of the very... It's one of the most important tools to have in your toolbox. Marine Micro. So the Zealot there walking in. Gets in. He's gonna see the backside. He's not gonna get a lot of important information. He's mostly gonna confirm that he might be in trouble with the choice he's made for his build order. Because that zealot's gonna go down, and losing the first zealot, it does hurt your fighting ability. You got more zealots are coming over the front, building a bunker in the front as he finishes the bunker, as he's running away to safety. But it does go down because Biol responded a little bit too late. Zealot on the top corner did go down already. And we've got Triple Zealot there inside of Biol's base. Biol Michael's backwards, does not want to fight. At least he doesn't want to take damage. 
in this fight. Got three Zealots there and bring them back. Couple Marines being put into the bunker to damage anything that walks across the map. Um, can't say this is an interesting one. You know, the fight is going to happen on the side there. I just want to highlight this pylon and exactly what it does. Although... Yeah, so let's talk about the pylon while the Marines are fighting there on the side. That pylon blocks access to the gas, which um, stops the SUVs from mining gas because they get stuck right here on the right side of the pylon. Now, what Bill has to do in that case is build a second refinery. He doesn't have to finish the second refinery, he just has to start the second refinery. And it allows him to start mining gas from the finished refinery, which the pylon is trying to block. Now, Bjol did build a second refinery, probably because he might not know. Maybe because he by accident didn't think about cancelling it. Maybe because he's got some really interesting plans up his sleeve. Because he did put six SUVs on the gas. And he's getting stim, he's getting medics, he's got marines in the front, ready to attack, waiting to strike. Got Dragoons coming out from Kensei. And he's producing Dragoons from triple gateways, got a robotics finished up, got a support beyond the way. Now, Biola's gonna have to start attacking pretty soon. Because I don't think he's gonna have Siege Tank finished in time to deal with the Reaver Shuttle. But maybe his Micro alone will be enough to deal with the Reaver and the Shuttle. But right now, there's Dragoons waiting in the front, ready, waiting for Biol to move out. But Gensei doesn't know, or maybe he does know, that these Marines are stronger than the Dragoons that Gensei has right now. Got a Citadel of Adun on the way as well. The cannons coming up in the front. Biol is not moving. He's not moving at all. Oh, wait, is he gonna go? Is Biol gonna go? Got the range on the way. Stim is finished up. Got Engineering Bay there being built in the back. Factory there, finished up as well. Machine shop will be added on very soon. Getting command center number two as well. Beal's going for the attack. So the good Michael here is very good though. He's not using all of his marines either. I think if he used all of his marines, his fight would have been way more one-sided in favor of Beal. But he lost a lot of marines there to the Dragoons. Stutter stepping backwards, trying to create distance. If those marines had marine range and stim combined, he would have killed more. But, oh, he oversteps way too far. Loses a lot of marines to the cannons. Now the dragoons are back. Uh, marching back to that choke to put the pressure back on Biol. Biol actually... I think that is one of the very first mistakes I've seen Biol make. He overstepped way too far there. It was a massive overstep, a massive overreach. You got Siege Mode on the way, Siege Tank also in production, but the Reaver Shuttle already arrived in the front at exactly 6 minutes. Gensei has some really high maintenance, high multitask and micro bolt orders. It's a pretty difficult bolt order to pull off. He's trying to break through that bunker in the front, but it's getting repaired quite well. Tank arrives on the scene, Tank has Siege Mode finished up in another 5 seconds. Bunker in the front, oh, sorry for that one. Bunker in the front, gonna stay alive. The repair is too damn good. Which means Gensei cannot break through. He might try to go for a Reaver Shuttle drop on the minerals. He might not, not too sure. But it looks like Biol defended himself pretty well. The Reaver Double Shuttle does come, the Shuttle Double Reaver pokes its head beyond the hill. Finds Marines, turns around, and I'm gonna change direction and fly all the way around over to the bottom side and try to fly in from there. I love one attack on the way for both gateway units and for the Marines. Factor number two is being built there for Biol. Kills the turret on the bottom corner. Waiting for Marines to come in closer. Marines coming from every single direction. Picks up the river very quickly and flies right out. I'm gonna try to go right back in. To kill those Marines, maybe kill the tanks. The siege tank hits the river though, that's not what he wants. Gensei doing a lot of cute and very good micro, but not really able to get in close enough to actually kill anything or achieve anything. But now going back to the front side there, it's got Zealot mixed in with speed. Gonna hit hard, really hard this time. Attack of the bunkers, bunkers not getting repaired, there's no SVs on the scene. One Reaver goes down, picks up the second Reaver, it's still alive. Now Zealot's oh, Marine's coming from the back to the front. Reaver tries to shoot, Reaver kills one Marine. Pretty disappointing performance there. Oh, he loses the shuttle to the turret as well. That attack 
did not go as Gensei wanted it to. That was pretty well defended by Biel, although Biel did lose two tanks, but it still is one tank alive, but it did lose about 10 marines. I'd say that fight definitely went very, very well for Biel. The one attack finished up their four marines, I believe. The one attack is finished up. About 9, 11 gateways there for Gensei. He has not yet built a second shuttle. He's building a second reaver though, has no cannons on his nexus to protect from shuttle dro from tank drops. And I do think we've got a tank drop coming out from Biol here because he got a dropship finished up and he's gonna load up two tanks. I think this is gonna be a tank drop. Although Zealots, oh, he doesn't go in. He could have gone in, he could have broken through so easily. And he decides not to, that would have been, oh, that would have been such a great choice to go in. So the tank drop arrives on the scene, probes unprotected, one reaver on the scene, ready to shoot on those tanks, tanks teaching up the tanks, hitting, killing a lot of them probes. He went from, I think, about 36 down to 28, so maybe didn't kill as many as I thought he would. It was a pretty good probe pull there from Gens, and now the mass attack, they're coming to the front door, arriving on the scene, reaver on the side, shoots on the tank, picks it right back up, Marines coming from the right side to the left side, gonna try to defend the choke. The scare all oh, the Reaver Shuttle Micro is absolutely monstrous. He's just gonna overpower him. He's gonna overpower him here. Beautiful performance, beautiful micro. The zealots are just too damn strong. Now if Gil had two more tanks here ready to defend, I think he would have helped. But those two tanks not being there means he's getting overrun out micro out killed. Maybe those two tanks didn't do enough. He's still dancing with the Reaver. The is in trouble. Got only a couple of Marines left. The tanks will die. The tanks are all dead and gone. SUVs can't fight back, waiting in the corner for their execution. Can't say what wow. So this is what happens when a Terran misses their counter-attack window at about the 4 or 5 minute mark. He had a chance to counter-attack, decided to counter-attack too late, and he paid the price. Now of course it's difficult to determine when to counter-attack, but usually Biel has a great sense of counter-attack. Usually he knows exactly that he can go, but this time around he made mistakes, lost a lot of marines, lost his time windows, and then just got out micro really hard by Gensei who performed a really good one nexus triple gateway one robo build order it was really beautiful I like that build order it seems very difficult to do because you gotta maximize the efficiency and effectiveness of your gateway units and your reaver and it also seems very difficult to defend or the Terran, because you can also not make mistakes, because it's all about those early hard-hitting fights where either player cannot afford to lose too much, because at that point they get steamrolled. As we saw right there, Buell lost too many units, could not hit that Reaver getting micro on the side there near the choke, and that just decisively won Gensei the game. Gensei's Protoss really is something special something special so this is the final game of this monstrous set of games Gensei against Biol, Sam races, Protoss against Terran and both players are on the 6 o'clock and the 12 o'clock spawning locations now I'm going to make some predictions here, and I'm going to predict that Buell is going to go for 5 barracks bull order. Because that is usually what a Terran does when they're on 12 or 6 spawn locations. Because there are 5 directions shuttles can fly in from. And because it's not possible to respond to every single angle in time. When you have only a triple barracks production. That means way less units. With five barracks, you get a lot more marines. Much easier to cover every single potential path the Protoss has to fly towards those SCVs and kill them. 
That's what they usually do. There are some players who play this on triple barracks, two barracks, or no barracks at all. There are players who do not use triple barracks when they're on a 6 o'clock spawn location. And sometimes they make it work. One example that comes to mind is Brain, who pretty much always plays with as little as he possibly can to survive. The 5 barracks bolt order is kind of a lot, a lot of marines, a lot of money being sunk into marines. It slows down your factory production, it slows down your Stargate start port production. It slows down all those advanced gas structures, because you're producing so many marines to defend yourself. But the old might be planning on something else. He's getting a fast gas there though, and we do see Gensei once again going for triple gateway gas into his cyber core. Might go for the exact same boat order as last time. The Zelda arrives from across the map, attacking the Marines, but the Marines do manage to get back to their barracks, where it's easy to micro against the Zealots. Oh, small mistake there. The one Zealot. Gensei forgot to pull it back. SV arrives in the backside of Gensei's base. Biol sees the bolt order, and this time around, I think Biol is going to be a little bit more aggressive and try to push his advantage during the time frame that he can, instead of after the time frame where he could. Last game he missed the window, maybe this time around, Bill is not gonna miss the window of opportunity to attack. He's saving up minerals though, he's saving up minerals though. Academy almost finished up, he's gonna go for an extra command center, got a fight there happening on the middle, Zealots are being pushed back home. One Zealot walks all the way around that group of marines, He's going to walk right in and scout the backside of Bill's base. Bill's got medics on the way and Stim as well. Zelda walked through. There's no choke from Gensei and I... Oh, what? Well, Dragoons are on the way and Bill probably knows but Bill is deciding against committing to the fight at the moment. And I think he could have done some real damage to those probes or maybe killed the Zealots in the choke and then had leverage over the Dragoons if he just went for it. But now he's gonna go for it though. He's gonna go for it anyway. Zelda's there on the side trying to walk right past, but they can't. But the Zelda there's still alive in the back. It snuck in while the other Zelda was getting attacked and chased down. Beautiful position in between those supply posts for the Marine. Beautiful position. So Zelda does make it in and it's gonna have taken down at some point marines are walking the marines here are trying to walk around the dragoons in the case the dragoons are walking across the middle but they aren't they're waiting in the front of the choke Gensei is waiting for Bill to attack Bill might have a pretty good chance here because marine stim finished up there's no dragoon range on the dragoons yet Looks like he can't go in. Looks like this time around, Gensei has enough to defend. Got the shuttle on the way, still what to do also on the way. Support bait finishes up right as I look at it. So Reaver should be queued up very soon and picked up and flown across the map. Gensei's gonna try to win the game with the exact same build order as last game. And knowing Gensei, he's got a pretty damn good chance of winning, but I also think that Bjorn not losing Marines to the cannons this time around is putting Biel in a better position than last time. He's being aggressive as well. He's not sitting in his base and waiting for Gensi to come to him. He's trying to kill Dragoons. He's pushing those Dragoons back every single time they even tr think of coming a little bit too close to the bunker. Now Marine range also finished up so the Dragoons cannot really kill the bunkers anymore. Marines are pushing forward there though because he has to make sure the one bunker does finish and he has to make sure he can kill some Dragoons and he kills three of them. Killing three Dragoons most certainly uh, ruins the attack Gensei had in mind because he needed all those Dragoons, he needed all of them to make the frontal reaver push work, but now only three Dragoons alive, he's not going to be able to push through. He does have Zealot there on the way and Siddle of Adun finished up for Zealot speed. And he's adding on more gateways to get a bigger Zealot army. Reaver finished up there at 6 20, double Reaver both at the same time, now flying across the map, Shuttle Speed is still on the way, Zettle Speed also still on the way, but I do think they should be finishing up at about the same time to allow for that frontal Zealot Reaver 
push. And if that's not going to work, Gamzee can always go for a second option that is simply flying the Reaver shuttle into the base and trying to connect with SCVs or Marines and just hurt Pyol however he can. Flies it over the side, finds an SCV bolting the turret, turret gets taken out, SCV as well. He went for 5 barracks, exactly as predicted. Tries to micro on the side, tries to be fancy but loses both Reavers and being fancy backfires yet again. Being fancy backfires yet again. I think the shuttle is empty, maybe there's still something inside. Yeah, the Reaver is still alive, so only one Reaver went down. He's looking for a spot to unload and kill Marines, but that's not going to work. So he goes to the front yet again. A lot of Zealots there falling up in the front. There's not there's not a real wall in the front. There's not a real wall. He's going to walk right in. Unopposed. Oh, the Dragoon is blocking him, though. Pretty bad control there from Gente. The Dragoon is blocking units from getting in. And block? Oh, that block might have just ruined the attack. Like, he can't get in. He blocked himself out. Sometimes... Oh, there's another Reaver Show there on the side that flew in. He got killed by... The Shuttle got killed by the turrets, but has another Shuttle there ready to pick it up. But the Shuttle goes down itself. A lot of Marines are dying right here. There's one more sh Oh, big scare up hit there. But Bjol survives without losing a single SCD and keeps a pretty substantial amount of Marines alive. And now the game becomes dangerous for Gense because he's on 40 probes against 45 SCVs. Triple command center there in the back for Bjol. I'd say this game is looking very bright for Bjol, but never count Gense out, although there's firebats in the front waiting to get into the bunker. Zealots coming in. Zealots see a wall. They see firebats and they turn around. Because at this point, losing the Zealots would just be a complete waste of resources. A waste of opportunity. So he goes for a shoulder up instead. Let's see what's inside. Double Reaver. Now is Biel going to shit the bed or is this Reaver going to hit and connect? There's a turret there. There's engineering bay in the air detecting the shuttle. Shuttle unloads. Reavers killing all the Marines. One Marine stays alive. Marine goes down in the end there though. SCV's gonna have to run. Ooh, the Reaver goes down before the SCVs can get shot at. But this cost him four more Marines. That was a lot of Marine kills there with the two Reavers. That was pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. The micro there from Bjol wasn't working out. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Try. And the Reavers just kill more than you hoped they would. So he unloads there onto the high ground, trying to kill something, kills the tank. Wanted to kill more, was hoping there would be more marines or maybe tanks a little bit closer to each other. But, you know, killing a tank with a high Templar storm is kind of worth it. They both cost the same. They both cost the exact same, so that was worth it. Equivalent exchange. 55 SCPs now for Biol and 49 for Gensei, still only a single Nexus, he's gonna build more in the future, he's got 4 Robos and 11 Gateways, no cannons in the front, 4 shuttles leaving the base, 1 shuttle on the top side, he's got 1 more shuttle for a total of 5, combining, joining forces, ready to fly in over, I assume, the right top side here. Oh, there's a lot of turrets there though. There's no Marines in between though, which is what counts. Unloads. Oh, three tanks shooting. Picks up the Reaver, gonna try to fly the Reaver to safety, but the shuttle gonna go down. He's storming on the Marines in the tanks. The Reaver shuttle went down there on the side. Couldn't find a spot to unload. There was tanks and Marines everywhere. Just kill a lot of Marines. Kill some turrets as well, but that drop could not connect with the SVs in the back, which is ultimately what counts the most. And Bill has six barracks production going on. Seven barracks production. So that also means he's going to go for maxed out marine upgrades because he's relying on the marines so heavily. So level one armor, level one weapon. They can level two weapon now as well. He's going to use his marines to the maximum. He's going to try to get as much out of those marines as he possibly can and rely on them to carry him to the victory. Another attempt at the frontal break. Reavers in the back taking heavy fire. Firebats now in the bunkers, hitting the Zealots. Reavers trying to kill the bunkers and 
he's breaking through, he's breaking through. He's taking in a lot of effort though. And he's going for the back to the front. Campbells are storming whatever they can. And all the Zealots do go down as the Firebat Bunker itself dies at the same time. But again, what matters most, Buell weathered the storm yet again. Again, they almost got through. If those Templars just arrived a little bit sooner, he could have maybe stormed on the tanks and maybe won the game with that frontal push. But the Templars arrived a little bit too late, which meant the tanks could keep on firing and firing and hitting those units time and time again. And a supply lead, well, I'd say a, a two supply lead isn't really a supply lead. It's kind of, they're both on more or less the same supply, but Buell has 80 STDs and Gensei's got 58. But even though Gensei's got a smaller economy, he keeps on putting consistent pressure on Buell. He's now got two Nexus. He's got, he needs more Nexus to get more gas. That's more or less the bottom line. Drop there comes in from the right side, starts unloading right next to a bunker, tanks hitting. Drop number two there though, coming from the bottom left. Buell doesn't notice. Buell maybe starts noticing. Buell doesn't notice at all. And the SVs do get stormed to death. Goes from 80 to 37. That means 43, 44 dead SCVs on the scene. Another Reaver there on the bottom corner. Shooting, hitting tourists, and killing a group of seven Marines. Gensei, it doesn't matter that his economy is smaller. He makes every single drop count. It doesn't always work though. We've seen games over the past 42 games where drops weren't doing much at all. But this time around, the drop play, the mass play, what he's doing here, he's relying on gateway army to pull him through. It's working, it's working really well, but this time around, there's too many fire bats in bunkers. The zealots are burning to a crisp. They are not even gonna do anything at all. The frontal bunker doesn't even go down, he kills nothing. With that mass attack, the Reavers and Storms did kill a couple Marines, did kill a couple tanks, but the Zealous themselves though, they did nothing. Just goes to show that a couple of fire bats in a bunker, they can absolutely destroy a Zealot army. It's, it's just four fire bats with level 1-1, one, one, and only the level 1 attack counts. Although level 2 attack gonna finish up very soon, was gonna make it even stronger, but those fire bats are the absolute MVPs. They are carrying the game, they're carrying the defense. Now Buell, 56 SCVs. Gensei on 66. Gensei comes in with another attack from the bottom left. There's a bunker in between, some turrets as well, some tanks sieged up right next to the SCVs there on the minerals. Tanks are loading, Templar on the scene, double storm comes out. Dodge the storms there though, so loses pretty much no SCVs at all. Keeps the economy safe and sound. Marines come to the back to finish off whatever is left. Did lose a bunker, did lose a turret, but losing only a bunker and a turret against a storm drop like that, that is a very well pulled off defense. So once more, Zealot's gonna try to break through the front door. He can't afford the gas for Master Goons because he only has five gas running at the moment. Only double Nexus might have to get a third and a fourth Nexus or maybe proxy a um, Nexus for gas on another location. Because the 12 o'clock spawn location is pretty difficult for gas harvesting as a Protoss or a Terran or a Zerg. More space required to mine maximally. Comes in over the bottom left. Rides on the scene. Not target firing the shells. It's all zealots. It's all zealots and they're hurting. Not. <coughs> You'll drop, come from the right. SVs are returning. SVs are running away yet again. Shuttle's on the chase, Shuttle's trying to hit the SCVs there with tank splash damage. Doesn't quite succeed there though, Templar arrives and it gets killed, but it's, it's only a Templar. They're on the scene, so nothing else to distract. So it goes down, can't storm. And Beal, once again, defends his economy, keeps them SCVs alive, and he's still in the game. This game is gonna be a long one, I am sure of it. Gensei is doing his utmost best to put pressure on Beal. And Bill is feeling the pressure, but he's defending the pressure, he's defending the attacks really well. His guard is always up, he's never dropping his arms, always keeping them high, protecting his face, protecting the most important part of his base, that economy. It's all about the economy, boys. It's all about the economy, ladies and gentlemen. She'll drop there from the front. 
Why is it over the tanks? Go straight for the SCDs. Ignore the tanks in the front, starts loading in the back. There's Templars inside, Templar storming, he's hitting with the storms. Kills 8 SCDs. So not a big hit, it's a small hit, but it's a hit nonetheless. Plus Bill has to keep pulling his SCDs off the minerals. And it's slowing down his income so much, he's almost maxed out. He's got a pretty much filled out base, but it's still slowing him down every single time. His tank upgrades at the moment are on 1-1, marine upgrades are at the moment on 1-2, soon will be on level 3 attack. The tanks will soon hit level 2 attack. Shuttle drop there on the side, flying over the right and one over the left. It's a fake one on the left though, it's hallucinations. It's gonna go in with both at the same time and pray to god. Biel focuses on the hallucinations and Biel focuses on the hallucinations which means the real drop is arriving on the scene. Templar inside as well. Templar storms. Templar hits yet again. Kills 20 SCVs this time. Great, great setup there from Gensei. I don't see a lot of players use hallucinated drops a lot, but Gensei likes using them pretty much every single chance he gets. He's also got carry capacity all the way. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4 stargates. He's getting a proxy gas base as well, as I mentioned before. Sometimes on a 12 or 6 block spawn locations, you really do need to proxy a nexus or gas from a better gas mining location. That's what he's doing. Drop comes in from the bottom left yet again. Marines are moving away from the bottom left there though. Comes in. He's stimming in. SCV's running away. The Temple's on the scene unloading. Temple's hitting. The Marines though. SCV's do stay alive. The Marines do go down. Pretty good storm drop, nonetheless there though, he's, he keeps on forcing Biel to defend and only defend. Biel wants to attack like he wants to, but he can't, and he knows that he can't, he knows he has to defend for now and probably a little while longer. I really need a sip of my drink, just give me a sec. Okay, right side, changing direction, gets scanned, he got detected by this one engineering bay on the low ground, Dragoon's moving in to kill it, can is being built on the middle, proxy gas base there is, mining gas, exactly what it's supposed to do, got more stargates coming out for more carrier production, got 14, sh 14 shuttles near production, wait that's not right, he only has 4 you can see 14 shields in production down the top corner, that's a bug. He's got only got 4 robos, so it's probably 14 zealots in production. Drop arrives, drop doesn't hit. Great unload, I was distracted by a stupid bug. But now the drop... Ooh, what that? Wait! Ah, I see what's going on, we've got a delay on the production tab. He did hit him. He did kill 40 SCVs. And now he kills even more. Well, not that many more, but he just killed a couple of them. And now a lot of zealots in the back are on the scene, ready to kill whatever they can, hunting down those SCVs, hunting down the bunkers, hunting down the marines. So yeah, he killed 40 SCVs. The... The production tab, there on the top corner, on the top right, was lagging behind like he stormed on the SCVs and I thought they stayed alive because the number didn't change but then all of a sudden five seconds later the number did change so Biol is in a pretty bad shape he does have an almost maxed out army though like he's got 43 SCVs almost maxed out army once shuttle comes in it is dying for sure though never gonna arrive at destination or on location forced to take a vacation so here we got a pretty big army once again, waiting to break through the front. But once again, we've got fire bass in this one bunker in the front that's gonna obliterate those zealots because level three attacked on the fire bats, pretty damn strong. A lot of cannons in the middle here, and carriers in production here back at home. He's not going for like twelve carriers at the same time. He's slowly transitioning to carriers, but building like three at a time in there. Look at the fire bats in the bunker. The zealots are completely useless. Fire bats though, the bunker itself did go down because 
tanks kept hitting the bunker. Fake hallucination drop there on the bottom right goes down. The real drop on the bottom left arrives on the scene. He impedes on the temple, but one temple doesn't get hit. Storms and kills the SCDs once again. Biol just keeps on getting hit. He's not pulling those SCDs to safety and he's paying the price for it almost every single time. Down to 33 SCPs yet again. His army is still pretty big, but his economy is hurting. His economy is in danger. If he starts losing units at this point, it might spiral out of control. It might spiral out of control. The front though, still pretty strong. The fire bats no longer in the bunker though, and that is a problem. Because if he goes for another frontal attack, which he is not doing, well, that's a lot of cells there though, so he might try to go for another frontal attack. But the fire bats no longer being in a bunker, it's pretty dangerous. He's killing his own bunkers, actually. He's opening up the front door. He's inviting Gensei into his house. While Gensei is switching over into carriers. So opening up the front, ready to go for a frontal attack there into the middle. And a fake drop there on the right and a real drop here on the left for Gensei. Got the Valkyries flying back and forth, waiting for shuttles to come in and try to intercept them. And this time around, Beale is keeping those Valkyries in the back. Gambles on going for the left drop, and the left drop is a real drop. Zealous did not low, but the Templars did not, so the SVs do stay alive this time around. And 55 SVs now. Tanks on the middle getting stormed though. Trying to push through. Lost, I think, about five or six tanks. He's losing marines and turrets and SUVs on the bottom left side because he's not properly defending the bottom left side. Bill's economy is a little bit... It's hurting a little bit. A lot of his buildings are burning as well. I'm going to start repairing a couple of them. He's moving tanks from the front to the back. I think that killing his own bunkers in the front here might have been a small mistake. Maybe a big mistake, because it does not look that well fortified. Not that there is a mass attack coming in there, though. Unload the Archons there, gonna kill the turrets, just kill whatever he can. Bill there with a good Valkyrie attack there on the shuttle. Shuttles don't really achieve too much. The Archons... Ah, killing three turrets. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying. That's for sure. He's lifted up most of his barracks, his engineering base, to get vision all over the map. With those barracks floating about. Cannons being built there on this 3 o'clock spawn location. More cannons being built on the middle. He's got carriers finished up. It's only 6 of them though. Or maybe this is even less than 6. It's 6 of them. And another 6 are in production. Got double Arbiter, got the Dark Archon, he's got the Dark Temple there as well, got the Corsair, he's got more shuttles finishing up. He killed a lot of probes, perhaps even too many probes. He's got 48, and there's, I think, 15 right over there, another 9, maybe even 10 over here. So half of his probes are mining minerals, the other half is mining gas. So he might run out of minerals pretty damn soon if he starts losing his own carriers and zealots at a rate faster than Bill can counterproduce. So he goes in over the top left. Shuttles behind, waiting for their moment to strike. But the Valkyries there hanging because they know shuttles are on the way. Shuttles do get sniped out of the air, mostly two shuttles stay alive, and now it's time to hit those carrier bodies. Carriers forced to turn around, run away to safety. Carriers are just getting destroyed by the Valkyries, but now they're fighting back. Carriers forced to remain in the air. More carriers all going down. Carriers all going down. Valkyries level 2 2. Tanks on level 2 3. Oh, Gensei just lost his entire army. What an absolute failure of an attack. He does have max out upgrades for his ground and air though, so he's got a chance to still go. Dark Archon in the base. You recall the SCV. That's what we're wondering about. Dark Archon got killed. There's the SCV on the middle. Building a command center. But Gensei killed too many probes. He's got no 
money in the bank, he cannot produce a max out army. I, I, I think, I think Buell is gonna win this one. Got a Dark Temple there on the middle, throwing tanks, undetected, unprotected. Keeps on hammering, keeps on going. But the tank goes down, Dark Templar is the MVP, gonna get number 3. He's gonna get number 4 as well, he's gonna get number 4. Buell is not noticing, he scans on the wrong spot. That Dark Templar's got so many kills. This Dark Templar all by itself is winning against say, the game. Oh, it goes down in the end. It gets 6 tank kills though, that Dark Templar achieved greatness. Now Buell, maxed out, coming across the map. Gense is rebuilding probes because he realizes he killed too many of them. He pulled all the probes here on the gas onto his minerals, except for six of them, he's keeping them on the gas. Got a pretty good army there on the middle, ready to counter-attack. He's got Dragoons, Templars, ready to go. But too many tanks are on the middle from Gense. Got an Arbiter in the back, Carriers coming in as well. Carriers are going to be the game-changer. Storms are destroying the tanks, Dragoons do get destroyed themselves as well by the tanks. But he cleared out the entire frontal portion of that tank army. And now we've got the carriers in the air, ready to push forward even more. Orbiter protecting, waiting for the Valkyries to arrive so he can stasis them and lock them up for good. And allow the carriers to push through once and for all. Plea... oh, the Valkyries going forward. Ready to take down those carriers. Orbiter in the back. Waiting to strike. Valkyries arrive. Arbiter is hunting down the Valkyries. Gets a pretty good stasis. Gets about six or seven of the Valkyries in stasis. Now the carriers moving forward. Ready to kill the Valkyries. Splitting up the carriers as well. Valkyries are going down pretty fast. We've got no EMP to hit the carriers with. Yeah, that carrier split is doing work. That carrier split is doing work. Valkyries not that awesome if the carriers are all split about like this. Zealot now coming through as well. Already in the air, protecting, giving invisibility. The tanks are fighting back. Against his army is bigger than Buell. Buell just lost a lot of supply. He's down below 160. The Valkyries will come out of stasis very soon, but will probably die almost instantly as the carriers start hitting back. Do the carriers actually have pretty good HP or are they on low HP? They are beyond their shields. They are losing HP, but we've got a huge ground army pushing across the map. Gensa being pushed back into his own base. Ooh. Ooh. He's scanning. Once again, gets units stuck in stasis. Wow, I thought Gensa was going to lose after the economy got so small, but... He's pushing really hard. And Buell cannot keep up with the production. He's losing supply so fast and calls GG and in a really unexpected turnaround there at the end. Gensei just overpowers with pure muscle. It was pure superior muscle. Just punching his way through his entire army of steel and metal, blood and guts, and the cybernetic dragoons. Whatever a Protoss is. Protoss is cybernetic, right? I'm not, not sure what the Dragoons are made of or what the Zealots are made of. I know they're alien, but exactly what they are, I don't know. They're something. I should probably read up on what they actually are, because I just don't know. They're Protoss, right? But how biological are the Protoss? Are they like a mix of cybernetics and biology, or are they something completely in between? Are they more cybernetic than biological? I don't know. What I do know, Gensei is victorious. Winning almost every single game in the past 18 games. He lost twice. Won 14 times. Which is absolutely brutal. Buell got absolutely destroyed. Buell fought back really well in most of the games, but in the end he could not match up with his Terran against Gensei's Protoss. Gensei's Protoss apparently is just really damn good. It's diverse, a lot of different strategies. He's got so many strategies I can't even name all of them. 
He's got like 20, he did like 20 different things. And almost every single thing worked out. He is your worst nightmare. Anyway, that's it for RGBTV here today on RGBTV YouTube channel. And that's the end of that best of 41. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you return when I start doing regular best of sets or single games again with other players because, you know, 10 videos in a row with just, just, just two same players. I think that's kind of a lot. That might be a little bit too much. This might have been a little bit too much. So please do stay around for the next time when I'm going to probably do something like Burger Sasu against someone else. Because I've been dying to see more Burger Sasu return after seeing these two two weeks in a row.